So the WWDC 22 keynote has just finished. And I think the biggest takeaway from this one is the MacBook Air M2s. Now these models look dramatically better than the previous model. It looks a lot more like the Pros with some new colors here that I actually really like. But don't get confused by the M2 versus the M1 Pros and M1 Maxes. Just because it has a two instead of a one, it doesn't necessarily mean it's better. Now it is definitely better than the M1, so the straight up M1. But uh, when you're comparing it with the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, M1 Pros, M1 Maxes, they just don't compare. So we're gonna break down into the data here and just see how it compares in case you're thinking, hey, I'm gonna trade in my 14 inch, I'm gonna trade in my 16 inch for these new Airs because you will be downgrading in performance, even though it has a two in it. Now, 13 inch MacBook Pro M2 was also announced alongside the MacBook Air M2s. Now that MacBook Pro 13 inch off the riff, you should not get, it is old tech. Everything inside it is old except that new M2 chip. It has the touch bar, old screen, old design it looks so outdated next to these new computers i have no idea why apple decided to keep that in the lineup that should have been gone and axed so i'm not going to talk about that one in this video but if you are looking to upgrade to a new m2 computer definitely definitely do not look at that macbook pro 13 inch that should have been gone last year all right so let's jump into some comparisons here now keep in mind for this video we will be comparing only the m1 pro base chipset versus the m2 chip that's the only fair comparison because if we start upgrading the M1 Pro chip to the max and any upgrades, it just takes it to a whole nother level and it is not fair for the M2 chip. So base 14 inch MacBook Pro M1 Pro chip versus the MacBook Air M2 chip. Starting off with the design of the two machines, the MacBook Pro and MacBook Airs both follow this industrial design language. They both have a notch on the display, but they come in different colors. The MacBook Pro comes in a silver and space gray color. The MacBook Air comes in silver, starlight, space gray, and midnight. Now that midnight color is very sexy and is really enticing to grab a MacBook Air just for that color. But um, you'll see as we go through the specs, color is not going to make up for some of the shortcomings of the M2 chip in comparison with the M1 Pro chip. But hopefully Apple brings over that midnight color to the MacBook Pro lineup. So starting off with the prices, the stock price, base level price of the M1 Pro 14 inch MacBook model is $1,999. The entry point for the MacBook Air M2 is $1,199. M1 Pro base model is an eight core CPU with six performance cores and two efficiency cores. The M2 gives you eight core CPU with four performance cores and four efficiency cores. Now over on the M1 Pro, you're getting six performance cores versus the four on the M2. So one win for the M1 Pro chip so far. Next up, you get 14 core GPU in the M1 Pro chip base. Over on the M2, at the base level, you get an eight core GPU, but it is expandable up to 10 core GPU. So once again, M1 Pro chip takes the win over there. Next up, they both have a 16 core neural engine. The memory bandwidth on the M1 Pro chip is 200 gigabytes. The M2 is 100 gigabytes. Now the idea here is the bigger the number, the better. It allows for faster data transfer and overall performance of the machine. Now you may not notice the difference in some tasks, but as the number goes up, it will feel a little bit more speeder because it can call data and read data a lot faster. But M1 Pro takes the cake here with double amount of memory bandwidth at 200 gigabytes per second. Media engines between the M1 Pro and the M2 are the same. We're not going to go through that one by one. Let's go ahead and talk about the displays. We're not going to talk too much about it. TLDR, the MacBook Pro display is a lot better than the MacBook Air M2. Now, once again, of course, I have not seen the MacBook Air M2 in person, but judging on the specs, you can clearly see that the MacBook Air display takes the cake on every spec imaginable. You can do a one-to-one -one comparison on your own and just see that everything is a lot better. I mean, you get a 1600 nick peak brightness over on the MacBook Pro display, only 500 on the MacBook Air. It is 120 hertz ProMotion display on the MacBook Pros. Over on the Air, it is not, it's 60 hertz. All right, so memory. This is always a fun topic and a fun way to see what Apple gives us as far as baseline numbers go. So 14 inch MacBook Pro gives us 16 GBs. The M2 MacBook Air starts off at eight GBs. Now that is configurable up to 24 GBs, which is better than the M1 that capped out at 16. But the M1 Pros can be capped out at 32 gigabytes. But just looking at the baseline model, once again, the MacBook Pro takes the win on that one. 
As far as storage goes, baseline M1 Pro, 14 inch MacBook Pro is coming in at 512 gigabytes. Baseline storage on the MacBook Air M2 is 256 gigabytes. Configurable up to two terabytes on the MacBook Air and eight terabytes on the MacBook Pro. If we're just looking at the baseline models, once again, the MacBook Pro takes the cake. Now let's talk about some of the ports that these devices have. Once again, the MacBook Pro wins once again in this category. You just get more expandability options. You, I mean, you have the SD card slot, you have three Thunderbolt 4 ports. Over on the MacBook Air, you don't have the SD card slot and you only get two Thunderbolt 3 ports which means you can only connect one display to it, whereas you can connect two displays over on the MacBook Pros. Thunderbolt 4, even though it's very close to Thunderbolt 3, it does give you a little bit more capability and power in what that port can handle. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the prices of the MacBook Air M2. If we go ahead and do some upgrades, we already know that the baseline MacBook Pro M1 Pro 14 inch model is $1,999. Base M2 is $1,199, but once again, that only gives you eight gigabytes of unified memory and a 256 gigabyte SSD storage. Now, if you are only going for the baseline model, and if you're looking at which gives you the best bang for your buck, my opinion would be get the MacBook Air M2. But if you are looking for a little bit more power and you need a some more RAM, you need a bigger hard drive or SSD, here is where it gets a little bit trickier. So if we go ahead and customize our MacBook Air, let's try and match it to the M1 Pro 14 inch base model. So I'm gonna get the max GPU count over at 10 cores. So that's gonna add in a hundred bucks. As far as memory goes, we get 16 over on the base uh, 14 inch model. So let's just go with 16. Just do a comparison one to one apples to apples. No pun intended. Next up, we got to upgrade our SSD. So we only get base 512 over on the 14 inch model. So let's go ahead and just give ourselves a 512 GB over on the M2s. And that's gonna cap us out at 1699. Now I should mention on the M2, you do have two options for charging. You have the dual USB-C port power adapter that Apple showcased in the WWC keynote. It comes in at 35 watts, or you can opt for the fast charging 67 watt power adapter. Both are included. You don't have to pay extra, but you can only choose one at checkout. All right, so now the tough question that we all have to ask ourselves, this spec'd out M2 is $1699. That M1 Pro base is $1999. Is that $300 Delta worth it to jump up to the MacBook Pro? Now, generally speaking, if the budget allows it, I would definitely say yes. If you're just a music producer and you're not worried too much about the GPU core count, you're not too worried about the display because you'd be connecting it to an external display, then I would say save the $300 and get the new MacBook Air M2. Now, if you decide that you want to upgrade the memory to 24 gigs of memory and you want to upgrade the SSD to, let's say, one terabyte or two terabytes of storage, I would say definitely go to the 14-inch MacBook Pro and maybe upgrade one or two items there and get that just because you're getting a lot more machine on that chip over on the MacBook Pro side than you are with the M2 model of the MacBook Air. So if you are deciding which one to go for and the budget allows it, go for the MacBook Pro base 14 inch. It is better than the M2 MacBook Air, even though the MacBook Air is lighter and looks cooler with the new color, you're still gonna get more performance out of the 14 inch MacBook Pro and expandability and all that. But I only say go that route if you are upgrading some of the components in the M2. If you're just looking to get the baseline MacBook Air M2, great machine, go for the M2. Don't jump up to the M MacBook Pro because that price difference is probably not worthy of the $800. Baseline, if we're looking at base to base, get the MacBook Air M2. But as soon as you start to upgrade some of the specs in the M2, it just makes more sense to jump up to the MacBook Pro because you're getting more value and performance over there. But here's the thing, when Apple comes out with M2 Pro and M2 Max is probably in the fall, sometime in October, November, those are gonna be some really powerful computers. And then it will be a no brainer to jump up to the MacBook Pro 14 inch base M2 Pro just because of how good I imagine it's gonna be. Until then, we have the M2 MacBook Pro. Let's hope that color Starlight comes over to the MacBook Pro lineup and we got ourselves a perfect, perfect computer.